as we prepare and brace ourselves for the seven days of rage which has already started it is only fair that we understand what is going on here because what is going down in Kenya right now is unprecedented now I've listened to some analysts trying to sell the idea that this has happened before that indeed it happened during the aborted second liberation that swept Mwai Kibaki into power as the third president of Kenya what they are saying is that even then young people played a key role and this is only history repeating itself and therefore we should expect more or less the same results things going in more or less the same direction as they did in the late 90s leading to 2002 well I disagree to be clear what we're witnessing within the borders of the country called Kenya is undoubtedly unprecedented it has never happened before again we have nothing from the past to compare it to let's be clear now stick with me in this supercharged show I have prepared for you and one of the things I will look at again later is this title this heading from the Gen C the seven days of rage because there's something very airy very bizarre very chilling about this title and indeed to me it rings Almighty God and this judgment season you know most Kenyans don't believe God Almighty speaks they don't which is okay because my prediction is in the next few days and weeks and months even those Kenyans will discover Almighty God speaks very loudly very decisively clearly for everybody to hear and this is terrible news for UDA and Kenya Kwanzaa but I'll come back to that now one perfect shortcut to be able to predict what is coming these seven days of rage and after is to carefully examine the response of the other side now soccer fans are going to understand me immediately they're really going to get this because at the beginning of a soccer game one team implements their tactics and then the other team responds a short while later now after this other team has responded it is very easy to very accurately predict how that game is going to end of course barring something unexpected happening or a very unexpected turn of events but usually more often than not you will be able to accurately predict how the game will end so how has the government responded well the government's response has not been decisive you know in a war when an army decides to do something the worst thing they can do the most terrible thing they can do is to respond to the enemy army in a way that is not decisive if they happen to do that they are finished that is just the nature of this life how has the government responded it has responded in the same old same old way they have always responded since colonial times by the way and specific to this regime that response has been full of the same old lies trying to fool the masses who have been on a very very steep learning curve they're not the same people 
but the government is still using the same old lies to try and stop the Gen Z revolution in Kenya. But if I can back up a little, what did I mean when I said the government has responded in a way that is not decisive? Well, they arrested a number of Gen Zs they felt were very influential and therefore it was felt that they know something. That they can give the government some information on what is happening here. And if you want to confirm that this government is in very serious trouble or security boys, then you need to know that one of the first things the police asked the Gen Z's who were arrested was where is your laptop? Now, that is a very interesting question. And it tells me very clearly that some people are on a fishing expedition. And very unfortunately, they don't understand exactly what it is they're dealing with here. Because in this day and age, the right question is, where is the main gadget you use online? Because my guess is, many of these Gen Z's don't have a laptop. And even those who do, it is irrelevant. Because it is not the main gadget used for communications. And so, for those with experience on crackdowns, was this really a crackdown? Maybe it was a crackdown. Maybe a small crackdown. Because a lot of those Gen Z's arrested were released later. And indeed, they were only a handful. And so, technically, by standards of the past, this was not a crackdown. But maybe it was attempting to be one. You know, in the days of Moi, when the Moi government decided to do a crackdown, it was a proper crackdown. Right across the board. It was decisive. And it usually produced results. Unfortunately. Now, government spokesperson Isaac Moura in the last few hours came out and addressed the Gen Z's and told us that in the recent major online get together they lied. There was a lot of misinformation and there was a lot of information there that was not correct. And therefore the Gen Z's should have given government people a chance to inform them, give them the correct facts. And he gave the example of proposals in the 2024 finance bill that the government this past week told us were removed. The 2.5% tax on motor vehicle owners, the 16% VAT on bread, etc., etc. But is that true? Is what Bonamora is saying factual? Actually, no. Actually, it is a lie. The government legislators from State House told us, actually they promised us, to remove those controversial proposals. But the truth is, they cannot be removed until this Tuesday. And therefore the Finance Bill 2024 that was passed to the committee stage, to the next stage, had all those controversial proposals intact. They are going to be removed if the government keeps their promise this Tuesday. And therefore what Isaac Moro is saying is definitely not true. Kimani Chungwa also told us that if Finance Bill 2024 is not passed, the government and the country will ground to a halt. Is that true? Of course not. You know we still have many many controversial proposals from Finance Bill 2023 that have never been implemented to date. And here we are being loaded with even more draconian proposals in Finance Bill 2024. Bottom line, Finance Bill 2024 can be thrown into the trash can, the whole thing, the whole stinking thing, and the government can go back 
to fully focusing on implementing Finance Bill 2023, which was also terrible. And the government will not ground to a halt. People will have authority to withdraw money from the treasury and do their thing. And therefore what Bonai Chungo is trying to tell us is misleading. It is not true. Bill Kizungumingi, it is a lie. Indeed, the best English word to summarize the response of the government is actually panic. And this is the same response we are getting from the political class, from Azimio, from political activists. This is the same response we are getting from all the opinion leaders and all the powerful in Kenya. Panic! Oh, I realize I got you off foot there about Azimio being in panic. Azimio politicians are in great panic. Why? Very simply put, all of a sudden, Azimio is irrelevant. Oh, yes. And so, put yourself in their shoes. If you suddenly became irrelevant, <laughs> wouldn't you panic? Keen observers amongst these politicians are suspecting that the Gen Z's will be successful and they will remove this government. And therefore the question they are asking themselves is who will be the leader? Who will be the leader in the new Kenya? Who will be the president after Kenya, Kwanzaa and UDA leave? And they're having sleepless nights, doing everything in their power to see how best to maneuver themselves into that position, squeeze themselves in somewhere, so that when all this is over, they will be there. Well, I have news for them. Whatever you try and scheme, it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how much foreign backing you have. You will fail. Why? Well, to give you a very simple one-sentence answer, it is the season. You know, even very many ordinary Kenyans are worried. Even those supporting the Gen Zs are very worried because nobody wants chaos. Nobody thrives in chaos. And in case you did not know it, where we are going, the key thing is going to be something called survival. Surviving this period in Kenyan history that we're entering. It is not going to be a joke. And the secret to survival is sticking to your lane. Playing as a team player. You know most of us are not team players. We want all the glory for ourselves. We want to be seen as the people behind something successful that will not work in this season and that is why it has been so difficult it has been a headache to many in government especially in the security sector trying to figure out who is leading this Gen Z revolution who who is their leader and therefore let me put it very clearly if you are not a team player do your best to start being a team player Stick to your lane. This is going to be very critical for those of us who want to survive. Glory seekers, mtaishia pabaya sana. Now, let us quickly go through some of the major events we're expecting in these seven days of rage. Actually, major confrontations we're expecting in these seven days of rage. And let us start with the ones that most of us are very happy about. Members of parliament who voted yes to the controversial finance bill 2024, allowing it to move to the committee stage and the final stages of being passed. <laughs> Those individuals are in serious trouble. 
what we have seen so far is the Gen Z's and the constituents of those particular members of parliament confronting some of them. This is going to escalate in the coming seven days of rage. Something else that we need to brace ourselves for. The Gen Z's have told us that they're going to storm state houses and state lodges countrywide. Okay? Now, the problem the government has here is that they're already stretched very thin. And therefore, expecting a realistic presence of the security boys in all state houses, all state lodges, countrywide. <laughs> That's a stretch. Very difficult to achieve. And remember, these Gen Z's are many. And they are being joined by increasing numbers of other Kenyans, older Kenyans. They are being joined by seasoned protesters. That can be good news for the government. But even after saying that, if I was an advisor to this government, I would tell them to ignore the state lodges and most of the state houses. Why? Because, believe it or not, that is just a distraction. Let me tell you a story. A man's farm is attacked by goons and they immediately rush to protect their very expensive dairy cows, three of them, and they mobilize the workers and those cows are very secure. But meanwhile, those people have attacked have burned their house to the ground. And so, they still have their precious three cows and nothing else. <laughs> Does that make sense to you? The very soul of Kenya is not in state houses and state lodges. No! The very soul of Kenya is in the governed people of Kenya. The Gen Z's, me and you, the people of Kenya. That is the soul of the country. Bottom line, there is no way you can save yourself by just protecting the buildings, leaving the soul of the country to go elsewhere. To deal with this effectively, you must confront and deal with the soul. Because if you succeed there, everything else is safe. Everything else will fall into place. But then, as we all know, it is too late. It is important that we understand where we are as a country. Because people are looking in the wrong places. People are thinking about the wrong things. Or oh, the Gen Z's should form a political party. What? <laughs> we are still stuck in our old thinking. These are the important things. A national political party. Huh? Who told you? Who told you that is the important thing? Because if you have eyes to see, and even if, very unfortunately, you don't have eyes to see, you have ears to hear. If at least you have ears to hear, you will know that the soul of Kenya is already gone. Poof! Gone! You can't get it back. Your government MPs cannot speak even at a funeral. Your cabinet secretaries cannot speak at a function. What? Bottom line, even if the Ruto regime does not know this yet, the truth is, they can never come back from this one. Emenda! Emenda! And that is not my opinion. That is a fact based on what we are seeing, based on what we are hearing. And so the most important thing for each and every Kenyan right now is to do their best to ensure that they are on the right side of history. Period. You know, there was a psychophant, a big supporter of the government, was always on the government side, was even a member of the Kambu Mafia, a man called Charles Rubia. But one day, 
he decided to be on the right side of history. And today we remember him, not as a supporter of the brutal Kiambu mafia of the Jomo Kenyatta regime, but we remember him as a great hero of the second liberation. Charles Rubia will be forever remembered as a great Kenyan. But he didn't start like that. He didn't. In this life, it is not how you start the race. It is how you end it. That is terribly, terribly important. You know, it is very strange how tribalism in Kenya has ended so suddenly. Have you had any talk about tribes in recent days? Are Kenyans talking about tribe? as they fight the finance bill, and as they chant, Ruto must go. Are they? Have you heard anything about tribe there? You see, a hungry stomach does not know tribe. It doesn't. And this thing of tribe alone is a major threat to the political class. Because over 90% of them are in power they are where they are now, courtesy of tribe. And so we have a situation where this thing called tribe, this monster, has suddenly been wiped away, removed from the rules of the game. What do you think these guys are going to do? <laughs> They're in serious trouble. Powerful legislators have been our bosses, our masters. And of course, it should not be like that. They're supposed to be our servants. And therefore, these Buanacubas have been going to parliament and they do what they want to do. They receive money in the toilets, we are told, and they vote how they want to vote, completely ignoring our feelings with the people who put them there. Now, all of a sudden, those people are doing that are in serious trouble. Some of them can't even go into their houses. Some of them have already relocated. They cannot go anywhere near their residences. Already. Even before we get into the seven days of rage proper. And there's more trouble for them ahead. The Secretary General of the ODM party, Edwin Sifuna, has announced that they're going to pick two legislators who voted yes. And they're going to teach them a lesson. Ili iwe funzo koingine. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to organize a recall of those MPs. And I'm putting my money on Sifuna and ODM being 100% successful. Why? Because of the mood in the country. Why? Because of where we are this season. Overturn, overturn, overturn. That is what is going to happen. Celebrities and influencers who have been receiving money from the government to try and influence people to support the draconian proposals of Finance Bill 2024 have been exposed. Some of them have even apologized although it's a little late in the day. And that exposure has happened too suddenly. Way too suddenly. Bottom line, for those who are spiritual, what is happening here is what is called a quick work. God Almighty is doing a quick work, a quick job. By the way, do you know the latest of what is happening deep inside UDA? A very key UDA WhatsApp group has had quite a number of members of that WhatsApp group being ejected. And these are individuals who are suspected to be sympathetic towards Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa. Now I know there are some Kenyans who believe that this fight between Gashagwa and Ruto is play acting. It is not real. It is staged for political purposes. Well, if you still believe that, then you'll need to explain, if this is indeed staged, why things that are not in the public domain are happening. To prove to us 
that this war is real. Now throughout the Bible, one of the very common techniques of Almighty God to deal with his enemies is to cause infighting amongst themselves, is to cause implosions amongst those he wants to bring down. Because remember the spiritual law, a house divided cannot stand. And then there are also the churches. They have been exposed very badly. Because they assured us that Ruto was Almighty God's choice. Well, if that is true, then how do you explain what is happening now? And I can go on and on. And that is why that title, Seven Days of Rage, sends a chill down my spine. Because you see also, the number seven is very significant, spiritually. Why not eight days? Why not nine or six? Why seven? My friends, please open your eyes. Now, very quickly before I go, in my previous video, I spoke about Joey's dad, actually his late dad who has always held on firmly to the belief that his son is completely innocent. Well, I have a very sensitive, actually two very sensitive special reports that reveal who the real killers and the real killer of the late Monica Kimani is highly likely to be. You don't want to miss this <laughs> crazy information. You know, very early on, shortly after this murder of Monica Kimani that shocked Kenyans, I released some very sensitive information to a limited audience then. I believe this was in 2018 and I was going through that information and I was shocked at the accuracy of that information and how things panned out. Because this was before anybody had been charged for the crime. At that time we only had suspects. Nobody had been taken to court yet. And that information tells you very clearly who the real murderer was. And solidifies the theory that Joey was simply framed a fall guy. And this information names names both the powers behind it and the person who executed it. Now for the super curious and the people who want to know about only 20 people tops are making available to them these highly sensitive special reports actually there are two of them for only $15 or Kenya shillings 1999 and therefore if you're interested in knowing the sad thing that happened to Joey, yeah, because it could happen to anybody, you can use the information you see on your screens right now to get your hands on this crazy, crazy information. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.